What are some of the hurdles that you have to get over as a collegiate strength coach getting into, let's say, a program for the first time? I think it has a lot to do with knowing people because mm -hmm. it's it's like if I didn't know Bo Sandoval, I don't know if you and I would have ever hooked up because mm -hmm. it always comes down to the connection thing. And that's nothing personal against you. It's mm -hmm. just you you do what you do, man, and people see who you come in contact with. So mm -hmm. sometimes there's an ulterior motive to get next to you and mm -hmm. – that be the benefit for their benefit in a way that helps like where it's like an educational piece it's maybe just ulterior motive to try to oh maybe steal one of your fights i look at things like that what are people's angles mm -hmm. and to get in this field i always especially if somebody i'm gonna hire i do my research about them like i want to know who they know where they've been so i think it's just to get to know you feel i think that goes with a lot of i think that goes in business in general mm -hmm. i think people have to be able to swallow their um ego and realize they don't know shit mm -hmm. i think a lot of people that especially young coaches nowadays mm -hmm. they look at me like they should be writing a program like like and i'm like dude you can think what you want <laughs> i've just been doing this for 15 years 10 yeah. years as a head so let me let me stop you right now i don't i know because because we talk about this all the time and what did i say to you i said well is it working and you say oh we've been successful i said then don't 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 change it i said yeah, you, yes, you got it right you've proven that this is working for you Let's not let's not fix what's not broken. My bad. Keep mm -hmm. going. Sorry about that. No, no. And it's it's so it's it's I want people that are that are gonna help understand my, the culture I'm trying to build because mm -hmm. culture is key with anything you do. I think it's probably key with your fighters having the right people around them. I think it's key with my athletes having the right people around. So people that intern for me, we go through. Like, it's probably overkill, mm -hmm. but if we have. Shoot, man. Let's say you have 25 people apply for the internship. Mm -hmm. Thorough background on you. We yeah. vet you as if we're going to hire you full time because we yeah. we like to take 10 interns just to have more hands on deck. But at the same time, if 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 we get one, I'm fine with that too because it's you're the right one. But I think it's just people understanding that you're not going to get paid a lot if you got into strength and condition. And and I say this like this: head strength coaches at Power Five schools, we get paid well. We get paid well, and we are blessed. And I say we're blessed because sometimes people don't understand. It's a blessing to be here because we could be – if I get fired today, University of Colorado football program will go on. They will lift weights. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's in charge at the end of the day. Yeah. But we get paid a good salary. But starting out, you don't. Like I said, I made $300 my, as a restricted earnings coach. My mm -hmm. full job, time job at Kansas, I made thirty two five. Man, when I made thirty two five. Man, we was going to Sizzler that night. I, we were getting made, like paid, and just having a great time. But it was just like, like you're getting put in the door. So I just think it's the longevity of the grind, the uphill battle, always understanding. And I think even for somebody in my position, I don't think you have to reinvent yourself. I think you just constantly got to adapt to the terrain. I always tell people, if you was going to fight a war in the desert, you're going to wear green camouflage because you're about to <laughs> that's good i like that i like that yeah i mean adaptability is key and that's in anything right that's what we talk about all the time and the reason why you were able to gain your weight the reason why you were able to produce the athletes that you've been producing is because you were able to adapt and mold yourself with the times and now are changing and the things that we talk about too as well um especially you know even with your venture with bjj and we'll get into that later mm -hmm. but i know i want to i wanted to give you this because i know i have a lot of like young coaches that are looking to get into into college coaching and, and even in professional coaching what are some of the and you can i mean it could be broad you can elaborate if you want but what are some of the positives and negatives that you see being a head strength coach at a major university positives and this is this is probably because of where i'm at mm -hmm. i can to a broader audience because mm -hmm. what do people associate with? Oh, you're at Colorado, man. You must be the best. And mm -hmm. I am, maybe I'm not. I, I, to me, I know what I do and I feel confident what I do. That's that's what people's opinion of me, have your opinion, I don't care, but I think you can reach a broader audience in terms of what you do because we do use social media to promote our program. I love promoting our guys. Mm -hmm. I love being around our guys. You know, but, And don't get me wrong, I love my family time right now, mm -hmm. but I miss my job. I do yeah. miss watching these dudes. And I always tell them, especially when we are like having virtual visits, like we were talking about before we got on with our recruiting, mm -hmm. I tell my kids, 
I don't care about the weight you lift. I don't care about the sets and reps because I coach people, not weights. And that's the biggest thing because I have a I, Donald Brown. He's a running back that was when I was assistant at Connecticut. Him and I, about 20 years later, still stay in touch. The dude's mm -hmm. mad. He played in the league. He was a first round draft pick by the wow. Humble dude, one of the probably hardest working dudes I've ever met. And this is a dude coming up through college. I would tell him just to motivate him, you'll never play in the NFL. You don't work hard enough. Like these are things we gotta do. And that dude would like, let me put it this way. His senior season, that dude lived four times a week during the season because he felt it made him a better and he led the nation in rushing that year. Yeah. So that's the biggest positive, having an impact because some of these kids come from shit, man. Yeah. You want to know, like, people talk about, oh, that ain't a tough dude. And and I kind of, like, shrug at it. Like, okay, so how do you define toughness? Mm -hmm. Because maybe the kid's not used to your weightlifting environment and he kind of, and he quit. Yeah. And he's not used to it. But the same dude sleeps on a dirt floor mm -hmm. and doesn't have food. Yeah. And he sleep for dinner. But you just said he's not tough. Or the mother or father's struggling with a drug addiction and they're helping raise their younger sibling. But you said he's not tough. So toughness is a broad spectrum in my opinion oh yeah um so and, and to me that's just the positive the negatives it's just not for long man when you mm -hmm. get people being a place it's just it, 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 it things can happen that are out of your control and we've yeah. seen across college football i'm not i'm not gonna front on that like we've seen people make bad decisions mm -hmm. at all realms of the organization and it affects everybody yeah um, so it's just I think that's where you have to have a good solid foundation in a network of people that you have an inner circle. And I keep my circle very, very small, very small. Like, like I don't, I don't converse with a lot of people, but the ones I do converse with, I respect, I respect their grind. I respect what they do. And I believe in my hearts of hearts, they're in it. They're for the right reasons. And, mm -hmm. and not say I've never been fooled, but yeah. Majority of the time, I think I can read people and that they're in it for the right reasons. And that's why I want to surround myself with people that are smarter than me. But like I said, the only negative early is just not for long. That's mm -hmm. that's it. I mean, make, like even now, I'm not coaching my athletes, but guess what? Some people may look at that and like, oh, woe is me. I'm Zoom and this and that. You know what, bro? You got a job. Shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> Be, be blessed and, and know that you still have a job because there's some people that got laid off during this pa pandemic and but they don't know how they're going to pay their bills yeah have a job man i get to talk to my athletes still so that that's just the way i look at sorry that sorry to go on a little tangent there no no you're good you're good that's what i wanted that's what i wanted drew see what i'm saying <laughs>